Today, I'm speedrunning every single Quest 2 life hack that Oculus slash Meta slash Facebook slash Sucky Bug doesn't tell you about. From bending the Quest 2 lenses to your will, to avoiding a melted f***ing charging port, there's a lot that either Oculus slash Meta just does a sh job of informing you about or doesn't really want you to know to begin with. About a year ago, I made a video called 10 Quest 2 Life Hacks Oculus Doesn't Tell You About. So instead of making a new and original video, my chip uncreated moron monkey brain is bringing you this video, a remaster slash remake slash reboot slash re-cringe of all the currently available Quest 2 Life Hacks. This will include previous hacks that some of you may have missed, as well as a host of new ones that I haven't gotten to talk about yet. And if me wrapping up all these Quest 2 Life Hacks into one cohesive video is a tool useful to you in any way, shape or form, an unsubscribe and a dislike would be much appreciated. Now, obviously, if you haven't already, you're going to want to enable developer mode on your Quest 2. This is easier to do than being banned by Facebook because you roasted Zuckerberg's fresh weave. Literally, all you need to do is go to developer.oculus.com, create an organization. You can just slap your username in here. It doesn't really matter. After you've done that, just hit submit. And you can go ahead and open up the Oculus app on your phone. And you can slippity slappity developer mode on in settings. If you need more handholding than what I've just given you, there's more videos on how to enable developer mode than lawsuit Zuckerberg has against his fresh weave. <laughs> And if you don't want to enable developer mode for whatever reason, don't worry. The majority of the hacks that I'm going to show off in this video anyway are mainly able to be done out of the box. Okay, with that disclaimer bigger than my toe after running into concrete playing gorilla tag out of the way, <laughs> let's speed run faster than I get my PP stuck in the toaster after misreading the Quest 2 instruction manual, all of the basic bitch level Quest 2 life hacks so we can get onto some of the more serious ones. Life hack number one, you can add a password to your Quest 2 for keeping your mother-in-law out of playing Kazuna AI on the f***ing weekend. To do this, go to settings on your headset, then go to security, click unlock pattern, set unlock pattern, and draw whatever pattern you want. Bada bing, bada boom, you got a password. Life hack number two, you can get free cash money by robbing Zuckerberg blind by referring a friend. Seriously. Open the Oculus mobile app, tap the top right diamond logo, tap send to one of your friends, or copy the link and send it to your friends that way. If one of your friends uses this referral code, you'll get about 30 da boom, 30 Badungas in your Oculus credit to spend on an overpriced hat in Gorilla Tag because J-Man Curly told you to. Life hack number three, you don't have to hold the controller like this. You can hold it like this. What I'm trying to say is there's a load of ways that you can hold the Quest controllers dependent on what games you're playing. This claw style grip is most useful in games such as Beat Saber, as it lowers the controller's center of gravity, making Bobby Eyelash songs easier to pass on emotional distress plus modes. Life hack number four, if you haven't figured it out already, you can download games to your Quest from your phone. Have your Quest 2 turned on, have it connected to Wi-Fi, and open up the Oculus app and go ahead and hit install to the headset on the game that you want to download. Life hack number five, change your privacy settings. Open the Oculus app on your phone, go to the settings menu, open the privacy settings, and you can adjust who sees your real name, your activity, and your friends. Imagine having actual useful privacy options like who can nick me data, who my data can be sold to, who uses the Quest cameras to see my mother-in-law playing Kazuna AI on the f***ing weekend. What I'm trying to say is having privacy options that are a little more in-depth than the ones currently available would be nice, please. Facebook, please. Zuck, please. Life hack number six, you can refund games if you've had less than two hours played. Life hack number seven, App Lab games are bored borderline hidden from you. To access App Lab games like Gorilla Tag or Vertical Shift, you have to search directly for them. I fully understand that Oculus Slash Meta doesn't want new users running into games that are unfinished or represent the quest in a bad light due to their in-development state, but literally stating that no results are found when you search Gorilla Tag into the Quest or search bar on desktop, and then when you hit enter anyway, it won't even show Gorilla Tag until you click view the App Lab game and and then it will take you to the page, only to then give you a warning message before you go any further. So if you're wondering why so many games are just missing, try searching directly for them in the store. Imagine actually supporting small developers with an App Lab indie page instead of just sneakily trying to hide them from your user base. Can't be this guy, right? Oh my god. Life hack number eight, holding onto the side button for long enough shuts off the headset. Why am I bothering to mention this? The amount of users that had no idea this feature existed when I mentioned it in one of my previous life hacks videos literally sucks my soul from my body harder than getting my PP stuck in the toaster. Life hack number nine, you can change your menu color from the default 
dark mode to light mode. Go to settings, experimental features, and scroll down to display and theme, and you can change it from dark to light. And bada bing, bada boom, you got a menu theme whiter than Mark on a Tuesday down on the beach. Life hack number 10. You can now counteract thumbstick drift with thumbstick calibration found in experimental settings. It's unclear how well this will work at counteracting thumbstick drift. I personally haven't yet to encounter thumbstick drift on any of my three Quest 2 sets, so I've been unable to test this as of yet. It is, however, nice to see that this possible flaw is at least being acknowledged by Meta through this feature. Life hack number 11. You can take off your controller's battery cover and loop the hand strap around your tracking ring to make a cheap skate index controller strap. Life hack number 12. Space Sense is a relatively recently added feature that allows you to see outlines of certain objects, people, or animals entering your play space. This is a nice feature to have if you have a bigger play space, but in a smaller play space, this ends up causing a lot of random objects from within your play space to begin popping up. So I'd suggest that you play around with this feature and see if it works within your space. Life hack number 13, you can enable a night display that helps you reduce your blue light exposure. This is important for proper sleep patterns as being exposed to blue light keeps your monkey brain thinking it's daytime when actually it's night. So if you want a good sleep and not spend two hours laying in bed contemplating your financial situation after having just bought a VR headset owned by a lizard plotting to take over the world, and that night option on a few hours before sleeping. Life hack number 14, comfort ratings, ignore them, play whatever the f*** you want, chimp gang. Seriously though, if you're new to VR, you probably want to actually take some of these ratings a little seriously as they can be a good way of determining what is within your comfort zone. Life hack number 15, you can gift games to friends by hitting the gift option when purchasing a game. But if you're broker than me after my four billionth Mark Zuck on these nuts joke, then this feature is utterly useless to you and I'm a f***ing moron for even bringing this up in the first place. Life hack number 16, subscribe to get hit. Life hack number 17, like this video. Life hack number 18, <laughs> Life hack number 19, you can change your guardian sensitivity. It took me way too long to realize that this feature even existed in the first place. If you go to your guardian settings, you can adjust how sensitive your guardian warning pops up. So when I play games where I'm less likely to uppercut my entire family, I lower my guardian sensitivity. Though the games like Gorilla Tag, I up it significantly, obviously. Life hack number 20, you can take a screenshot by holding down the Oculus button plus pressing the trigger at the same time. Life hack number 21, if you enable it in pass through settings, you can double tap the side of the headset to enable pass through. Life hack number 22. Turning on 120 hertz mode. Go to experimental features and slap that baby on to access 120 hertz in certain games. Also bear in mind, it drains your battery faster than Mark drains my soul from my lifeless body. Life hack 23. You can enable multitasking in experimental settings. This allows you to have multiple windows open at once. One for my Twitch stream at twitch.tv forward slash get hip. One for my Instagram at get hip yt. And one for my Twitter at get hip underscore. I'm slicker than Mark covered in sunscreen on a f***ing slip and slide here with these transitions boys. Life hack 24. You have set up Oculus Move, which is essentially Oculus's version of like the Apple Fitness app or whatever. You can enable the Oculus Move overlay, which gives you rings to complete like the Apple Fitness app. Life hack number 25 is how to avoid a lawsuit from app with the basic bitch level hacks out of the way onto the more advanced life hacks. Life hack 26, how to not melt your Quest 2. Since the Quest 2's launch, a range of users have reported melted charging ports. Sorry, I just have to stop the video for a second. I... I honestly can't believe how f***ing bad this is. Like, I can't even comprehend the image I'm looking at right now. Holy sh**. How? In fairness, I have spoken about this issue before. I mean, I did a good chunk of one of my videos on it, but this has gotten out of hand. A possible cause for this might be due to using third-party chargers that charge at a higher wattage than the stock Quest charger, meaning a lot of the USB-C chargers that you may have lying around may run the risk of possibly frying your port, meaning it's likely just safer to stick with the Facebook-made stock Quest 2 charger. Coincidence? I think not! Though in fairness, a lot of people have reported this happening with their stock charger as well, which is f***ing terrifying. So the general rule within the community right now is just to literally unplug your headset when it is done charging and not allowing it to continue charging throughout the night or day. Lifehack 27, you can sideload apps like Discord, Spotify, and Instagram and more onto the Quest as the Quest is actually an Android device at heart. To do this, you want to download an application called SideQuest to a PC or laptop that you have available. Plug your Quest 2 in and you should see the headset appear in the top left once you've allowed your PC access from within the headset. Once having done this, you can then go and download APK files for whatever app you want to install, like this one for Discord. You can find these APK files relatively easily online via the description of tutorial videos. I'm not going to post any of the links in the description down below, because from what I can seem to understand, YouTube doesn't seem to like me putting off-site links in the description, so I try and keep any off-site links to a minimal. I apologize. But once you do have an APK file from a YouTuber more useful than me, I guess, for whatever app that you want to install to the headset, go back to SideQuest 
device, click install APK, select a file from your computer, open the APK file, and you'll see it download. Go to your quest tube, go to unknown sources in your library, and bam, bada bing, bada boom, chicka bing. You should see the apps that you've installed and should be able to open each of them. Now, to the best of my knowledge, this is all still working to this day, but to be honest, I would rather we had just got the option to use things like Discord natively on headset, like a good fucking device. So maybe with Discord now partnering with PlayStation, there's a possibility that we could see Discord maybe partner with Meta slash Oculus and come to the quest. Lifehack 28, you can play a host of completely free web VR games. Shown via this much more detailed and far superior video by amazing channel, Kaz and Harry, you can go to the browser within the quest too and type in a link to whatever web VR game you'd like to play. There's lists online of all the web VR games that are available to you and links to each of them. Moonrider, for example, once you've typed in the link and are on the website, it has an option labeled enter VR. Click this and boom, you're suddenly playing a full on VR game in the Quest 2's web browser on your Quest 2, but like you're in it like an actual VR game. Whoop, 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 whoop. Lifehack 29 can add a table and a couch to your virtual environment by marking them out in real life in the desk and table features found in experimental features. Lifehack number 30, if using a link cable, this is not a link cable, this is a you can go into your USB power settings and disable USB selective suspend. So you can make sure that you're giving your link cable all the power needed from your USB port. You can also use the Oculus debug tool while you're on your PC, which you can find if you enter program files, then Oculus, then support, then enter Oculus Diagnostics, where you'll find it. This allows you to increase your link cable bitrate, as well as your render resolution, distortion curvature, and encoding resolution. If you want to know whatever the fuck any of those words mean, I apologize for being that guy, but uh, the my video that, well, I covered all of this is linked here for a more in-depth explanation because if I go through it now it'll take me all the it'll take me the time life hack number 31 the quest 2 has three IPD modes each at a set IPD distance most VR headsets that you know don't hate you and your happiness have an IPD slider that allows you to adjust for your specific IPD but since the quest 2 doesn't have this we gotta improvise if you have an IPD between settings for example my IPD is 65 millimeters which is right in between setting 2 and setting three and if your ipd is also between settings you can very carefully push the lenses right in between the two settings like this it can be a little finicky but if you get it right you should get an ipd more accurate to your real life ipd if you don't have an ipd between settings and you gloat about it in the comments down below you are literally the real life equivalent of this from polar express and if you have no idea what your actual ipd is there's a great app called eye measure that guess what believe it or not measures your eyes speaking of your eyes in vr you already know exactly what i'm gonna do the sponsor of today's video vr wave make tailor-made prescription lenses for the quest 2 valve index hp reverb and your mother htc psvr and even the fucking dji fpv drone headset i mean these guys have got you covered vr waves lenses use a magnetic attachment method allowing easy install and cleaning of their prescription lenses and not only can you easily input your prescription right on vr wave site but you can also add an anti-glare filter and a blue light filter to your custom lenses eye strain is no joke and can lead to a host of serious eye health problems later in life. Treat your eyeballs with some goddamn respect and give VR Wave's prescription lenses a look. VR Wave have full worldwide shipping and make a truly dope product that are a great solution for those of us in need of an extra helping hand for our vision. Thank you VR Wave for sponsoring this video. If you got to this point in the video, you dropped this king. Thank you. I do start to lose my mind a little bit when I slip into the vortex of editing and writing these videos. So keeping my watch time high to please the YouTube gods means a lot. So thank you. I really do appreciate it. If you like my content enough to get to this point, maybe check out my Twitch channel where you can speak to me live at twitch.tv forward slash get hip or come and hang out in my Discord server, discord.gg forward slash get hip. All right, thanks guys. You were epic. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Bye bye. I also have an Instagram and a Twitter if you want to check those out. Instagram is GetHipYT. I try and post every now and then on my Instagram and I try and post to my Twitter relatively regularly here and there if I can. And I make the selfies and I make the Fortnite. Alright, peace. Bye bye. I gotta, yeah, I gotta edit this video. Bye bye.